Hare Krishna. My dear, beautiful brothers and sisters of the world, my extended family of ISKCON, all of you, my community, my friends, my enemies, <laughs> all of you. I've come completely unprepared. But I do want to speak entirely authentically from my heart. So before I say anything, I want you to know, I'm going to really try here to be vulnerable, honest, and brotherly towards all of you. I'm already kind of in a sense, um, not part of any party. So I have no political agenda in me uh, speaking today in front of you. It is a very difficult topic. So before we go into that, let me create a space where we can, it's like my Guruji used to say, I'm a musician. So my Guruji says, music is only as good as its listener and the reciter. So before that, let's uh, take a moment. I do bow in front of all of you, my brothers and sisters, and I say, Vancha Kalpati Obisha Kribashin Bhuvayvicha Pati Dhanam Bhavani Bhu Vaishnami Bhu Namonama. So for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Hari Bhakti. <laughs> Sometimes I say Hari Bhakti. <laughs> I guess I'm trying to make it, uh, it's a very difficult topic. So my entertainer is trying to lighten the mood. I was born raised in this beautiful, beautiful uh, institution, community, very proud of being part of uh, this family. And it is a, an amazing, incredible blessing to be able to go anywhere in the world and feel welcomed. Somebody perhaps, you know, invites you from the door, you walk in, you could be in any country and there you are under this beautiful uh, sign, ISKCON, and the prashad is available. The deities are there. I tend to go straight into the temple, sit and sing. So I'm very, very grateful. Uh, of my journey through uh, this beautiful institution. Uh, I went through the Gurukul system in Rindavan. Actually, in fact, me, Nandu, Balaram, Yashamati Nanda Prabhu's sons, uh, Yashamati Nanda passed away. Um, we were some of the youngest kids to ever join. Uh, I think there'd be more, I suppose, in Dallas. I was only five and a half. And uh, of course, grew up in India. Uh, by profession, I'm a vocalist. I sing light Indian classical. I often joke, uh, light Indian classical is like uh, the dentist who couldn't become a doctor. <laughs> the dropouts. Uh, was training to be a classical vocalist, but then my flivorous mind. Uh, my father's name is Ajamil. Actually, this uh, concept, this particular topic we're going to talk about has a lot to do like the story of Ajamil. It is a very difficult topic again, and I, I'm gonna come from a place of love, affection. First of all, can I just say by starting, starting by saying, uh, my first hero was Lokanath Maharaj. <laughs> Who, why wouldn't, you know, we were little kids and we'll see from a distance, a glowing personality as he held the mic very gracefully with his head tilted a little bit and he'd start, Hare Krishna. <laughs> that we all know that sound. And, um, you know, when my father, my father was uh, a nurse before he joined uh, the Hare Krishna movement in 77. Actually, in fact, I think a month or two months before Prabhupada left. And uh, the first person he spoke to when he walked into the temple was Lokan Maharaj. And he was very impressed with the uh, Maharaj's austerity, Maharaj's uh, uh, kindness, his wisdom. 
I thought a lot about should I put myself in this situation. You know, wherever fear breeds, it divides us. You know, this world right now, if you think about it, I mean, as a musician, I haven't traveled in a year and a half, almost two years. Everything is shut down. And communities are getting ripped from within. You know, it's the vax vaxxers against the anti-vaxxers. And everything seems to be just head-on collision. And if we really practice our spiritual path, this really is a time to put, put aside everything. And really, as a family, for instance, there's a disputed family. I've come from a big uh, joint family from my father's side. And I've seen uh, how beautiful it is when we learn the art of dispute. Any marriage will tell you that. There's so many jokes on it, right? Uh, reminds me of a Punjabi family. Um, my best friend, uh, their parents used to bicker a lot, just small bickering. It's like throwing flowers. She described it as a dispute between a husband and a wife is like throwing flowers at each other. It's an art how to have a dispute and have a different point of view, but in the end of the day, still be able to sit uh, next to each other, chant, sing, and share prashad. So I'm really coming from that point. I, I, I don't want to in any way, I mean, I don't want in any way, my love, all of you, to insult anybody in any way. I'm going to be as honest as I possibly can because this is not a time of being political. It's not a time of being angry. And I understand how grief goes through different processes, they say, right? The first is denial, and then his anger rises. And then from anger comes a sense of negotiation. And you realize anger, anger is not gonna get you anywhere. Krishna gives a very similar uh, process of when the intelligence is lost. God, those, those were the days I used to know all the shlokas of Bhagavad Gita has been a long time. Uh, been a long time. What is that? Krodat Bhavati Sammoha, Sammoha Smriti Vikmama, something, right? Smriti Brahma Buddhi Nasho, Buddhi Nasho Pranashati. So we don't want to do that. We want to have a beautiful, like as if, imagine, I'm, I'm very visual because I'm, I'm an artist. I'm very visual about it. Imagine a beautiful grand table and we're all sitting lovingly trying to find the best solution to this uh, problem, uh, this unfortunate event. So this is my introduction. I wanted to just so I, I really don't want to in any way. As I said, uh, Loknath Swami was my first hero. And for all of us, so most of us actually, in fact, he's the first uh, Kirtan celebrity. <laughs> now you have many celebrities, but you know what? <clears throat> they all try hearts. He's the original. So we have a lot of love and respect for him, for his services that he's done. No doubt, no doubt about it. So before I was going to speak this, I thought, okay, in my, because I do a lot of silent meditation. Uh, every morning when I do my riyaz for my uh, vocals, I go silent, I listen to the Dhanpura, you know, it takes me to a place. And I was thinking about this issue, and I've been following it because everybody's following it. A lot of people are heartbroken, just like all of us. And I thought, okay, Buddha says, before you're gonna speak, let it pass through three golden doors, right? First, is it true, right? Well, As far as I saw the video of the meeting of the ICC board committee, nobody has denied it is not true. I think the severity has been um, obviously debated to what extent was the fall down, but I don't think anybody's denying it that momentarily, um, yeah, momentarily, that it is very painful to say it, my dear, that he did have a fall down. You 
in my just mind, I don't feel fair also at the same time to perhaps put him in these severe categories of re repetitive um, reoccurring abuses that as we know it can happen, uh, obviously uh, Maharaj has rectified and gone through it uh, quite a few times actually. That's why I can see why a lot of you brother sisters are upset that it's uh, reappearing like in the meeting someone called it old skeletons. Uh, someone called it, uh, well, a fall down can happen. None of us are perfect. That is very true. None of us are. And in, from that point, it does teach us humility that we cannot really judge anybody and crucify them, out, uh, uh, ostracize them. And this issue spills into many different issues in our, in our movement, but we're not going to go off topic here. So is it true? Uh, that's the first thing I was thinking. As far as I've understood, it did happen. It, uh, to what extent is uh, we don't know when we might never know unless um, I don't like to call her a victim. Uh, I think the correct word is the survivor. Uh, Satya, it is not, it is really a, yeah, it's uncomfortable for everybody, as I said, but she has survived. And as a father, I try to put myself, you know, in that position. It's not pleasant. It, uh, I'm a very peaceful person. I might be six feet, six feet four, six feet four with big arms, but uh, unless provoked, I'm pretty much quite happy to go about my day in a very peaceful way. I practice. Uh, being in a very uh, peaceful state to do music, it does, uh, it does invoke a lot of agitation to think that uh, if it was my daughter. Now, so is it true? We'll stick to that. Well, it is true. And uh, as I said, to what extent we don't know, but the fall down momentarily has happened. Now, the philosophical question we have to ask ourselves is, You know, like in the police force, you have to have an immaculate record for you to be entrusted with a gun and to serve uh, the government and be a police. You cannot, I, I've heard, I, I used to have a friend who was uh, applying for, uh, to become a police and he had a, a traffic offense, a speeding offense, and that came up. So the Guru Tattva, debate is uh, been going on. This is, seems to be the most hot topic forever for the GBCs. Uh, it's it's uh, constantly trying to readjust what kind of gurus are there now in comparison to the traditional descriptions of what a guru should be. When Krishna says, darshi, one who has seen the truth and things like that, or is it just initiating on behalf of Srila Prabhupada. This is all these things, philosophical, uh, uh, let's say, I wouldn't say dispute, but understanding is going on. But one thing, let's have a standard here. We're not talking about, we're talking about a very specific fall down. Um, is it stealing money? Is it flirting with a woman? I, I, I mean, it pains me to say my brothers and sisters, it's an 11 year old that has been touched inappropriately in whichever way you're not going to go into, but she has, and it has been admitted. Can we have a person like that to continue to initiate for their lotus feet to be washed? You know, this is a very, we have to be very careful what, standard we're going to set and I can see I can see both parties you see as I said I don't belong to any party because even by race I'm neither Indian I'm neither Westerner my father's Bengali my mother's half Colombian half Native American so I I, <laughs> I I belong to all of you it is not it is not a fight between the west versus the east 
I mean, most of you all are my friends. You know, I know all of you in India, most of you either personally or you've perhaps heard of me. And I know most of my Gurukuli friends who live here in the West, uh, they're friends of mine. I think there could be a little bit of a cultural difference, of course. Um, for instance, someone in the meeting, in the ICC meeting, I think it was Dave Kinnan and said, oh, in the West, if you were to smack someone's bottom, you would, uh, that's legal. You might get, uh, the cops might show up. <laughs> Whereas in India, corporal punishment, or especially at home discipline uh, in that manner is kind of accepted. So there might be some cultural differences here. However, we're talking about a spiritual leader. that cannot be worshipped the way he has accepted worship after his fall down. I wish there was an easy way to say this. And believe me, it pains my heart. Because Loknath, even though I'm not initiated by him, he is like a father to me. You know, my father was a very big collector in the Delhi temple. And my father knows Lokman Maharaj for a long time. I have family pictures of Lokman Maharaj, uh, my brother uh, standing in front of him as he has his hands on his head. And uh, I think the dispute really is, it would pacify the hearts of many if we were to willingly step down. I think that would be, I'm actually quite surprised that uh, he has not chosen to. I know he said in a private conversation that, that he just wants to continue his service. We all know that you don't have to be in a position of power to continue your service. In fact, our service to the Supreme Lord is eternal. So, um, I just wanted to check if, okay, yeah. It is uh, with great regret and humility that I, I appeal very affectionately. I appeal to Loknath Swami to consider this. I mean, if he does not want it to get dragged already, Look, we're online. I would rather not be here discussing this. But I thought everything's already online. This ICC meeting has been leaked. Uh, Bhakti Chaitanya Swami's conversation has been leaked. When I read the comments, the constant disrespect and the an animosity is just growing. I mean, there are temple presidents in the ICC meeting talking about a possible hypothetical scenario where the ICC will separate themselves from the GBC authority. Now, I'm not in that sense part of the institution. And in some ways, it doesn't really affect my spiritual path. But in some ways, I have attachment for the institution that gave me so much. And I just thought, wow, he, it, it's such a, they don't see that it's destroying them from within the divide is happening. So, I thought, how is the best way to, to really appeal uh, to Lokma Swami? Uh, if he could consider that, you know, I think it, sh it sends a message of that you're being heard. Because as I said, the first point of Buddha, is it true? It did happen. To what extent, but it did happen. And it's an uncomfortable truth, like uh, inconvenient truth, as they say, you know, when Al Gore came out with the whole climate change, he called it the inconvenient truth. I don't feel it was the right position to take when this all came up to maintain a level of 
authority, spiritual authority and power, especially, you know, I'm not big on this whole washing the feet and it happens, it's, it's, it's a, a sentiment, but you know, with that kind of, yeah, we're not just talking about somebody had a fall down. This is a very specific fall down. It's an 11 year old girl. And, and, and uh, when Lokanath, he sealed in one way, he sealed his own fate. Everything is a matter of a split second of choice. And in, in some way he sealed his own fate when he transgressed, when he passed, stepped across like Sita. You know, Lakshman Rekha was there for her protection. She passed over and this is uh, the result of how Ravana was able to. So it can happen to the best of us, but not really. I mean, I guess this is another conversation to have what pushes a, a sannyasi to feel a sexual urge towards an 11 year old. You see what I mean? So that's a whole other conversation to do with sannyas, the age of sannyas. We're not gonna get into that. I'm gonna to try to be very, already it's very difficult for me, very difficult for me. So especially being in a position of trust in an institution, which is, has a very good name. And I, I fear that if this is not dealt, if it's all, you know, all the threats of, you know, to, to, to protect the truth that it did happen. As I said, until we don't know to what extent, but it did happen uh, in those moments that fall down did happen. And Maharaj can continue his service and all glorious to his service. However, I don't see why it has to be maintaining his persona, which clearly he has, uh, he has let people down. So that was the first point I want to make. The second thing Buddha says, is it kind? I mean, I, 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 that's why I wanted to make this video in a very vulnerable state where I don't have any scripts. I don't have any monitors in front of me to be politically correct so that you see my heart. And hopefully uh, you can see that I have as much as love for Maharaj as you do. So I'm trying to come from a place of kindness, uh, a place of depth and a place of soberness. And so, that's for you to decide while you watch this video. Uh, I can't uh, speak for myself. I'll let you brothers and sisters to be my judge. And the last thing, is it necessary? I thought about that. I pondered that a lot. And I think it's absolutely necessary. Uh, a lot has happened you know, for those who have not, for those who are new, new in ISKCON, and perhaps don't really know what so much has happened. You know, I've, I've gone through the Gurukul system. I've been a firsthand witness of child abuse again and again. Uh, but it's not about me today. It's not my story. This is the story of all of us who have grown up in Iskand. And didn't stop in Gurukul, by the way. Uh, this continued uh, later also. I don't want to revisit those moments because I have made truce with those moments. My uh, the misuse of power against me in Juhu Temple, and I gave my heart for Radharas Bihari. I really did. All I ever wanted, you know, I'll share a secret here today, is wanted to sing in front of Radharas Bihari forever, and that was taken away from me. So I've already been in the other receiving end where you feel powerless. And I've gone through all these uh, emotions. Uh, now I'm 39, I'm a father of three beautiful children. And my, I've got two daughters, which also made me do this video in some sense. So this is a story of a lot of children that have grown up in this institution. And now we cannot just put them aside. 
This is what happens. It brews like, you know, Chanakya says about a boil. He gives an analogy. Sometimes it's good to just pop the boil and there's a pain, but it's healing for all of us. I would humbly beg you, let's come together and heal each other. Because enough of this putting it aside, putting it aside, it doesn't work anymore in this age of social media. Every, and you know what? The last thing we want is for this to come back again. And believe me, it will. If we do not take a stand, this will come back again. So let us work together and create an atmosphere where there's trust again. Uh, to bring people together, to bring our brothers and sisters. I love India. I mean, all my friends in the West love India. And now they're afraid to go because they feel they might get attacked. I mean, this is not a Vaishnava community at all. So I, I thought I will put my neck out there. Now, I might get crucified in this process. I hope you're kind on me and you don't but I've taken the risk of being here in front of you. And maybe some two temples might ban me. Maybe some of my brothers might look upon me unkindly. But to all of you, I want to say, I really care for this community. I really do. You know, as a musician, I've sung in so many different communities from Shri Ravi Shankarji to... Um, uh, hugging mother, laughing baba, <laughs> Osho community. Uh, I've gone to so many communities and there's something so special and so incredible, rich and, and, and beautiful about this community. It really is. And I have so much faith. Usually I'm not much of an institutional personal person. Uh, for those who know me intimately, I'm a very individualistic uh, spiritual path to me is a very it's a lonely path in some ways. You, know, you have to walk alone and you have to face your demons alone. But I have so much love for, you know, whenever I see the sign is gone, it makes me feel a certain sense of home. So I hope you, you are kind towards me. You can understand where I'm coming from. And I can understand why you're angry. It's not a good situation to be in where you feel your spiritual idols have been attacked. You know, many of my friends have the same views and very friends who are in very respectable, respectable uh, positions in ISKCON. Uh, their videos have been watched millions and millions, but they are afraid to come out. But secretly, secretly, they are supporting, um, um, supporting uh, uh, the other side who are uh, in that sense, bringing this particular event to light. So we shouldn't be afraid of each other. You know, I am, I'm encouraging an ongoing respectful debate. Uh, not a debate, I wouldn't say that word, word, but a conversation, a loving exchange, let's call it that, a loving exchange. Not in the darkness where the scorpions breed, you know, the energy of deceit, and, and political maneuvers to get ahead. We are talking about, uh, in some sense, our uncle, you know? So my humble, uh, humble request to all of you would be, if Maharaj, you're watching this, you know who I am. <laughs> and I haven't seen you in a long time. And it's unfortunate that that we're in this situation, but I would humbly beg you. You've done an amazing journey of being the soldier for, for Prabhupada. Perhaps in a very poetic way, this might be your last sacrifice is to step down and uh, in a very dignified way, in your own terms, uh, retire in some ways. Yeah.
is no easy way. So to that, I want to, my last thing I want to say is, uh, let's set the standard of child protection at the highest. We're talking about, where do I draw, where do I draw the line? I will, I will say the last thing. I've seen temple presidents steal money and disappear. We've all seen that happen. I've seen sannyasis get caught with a prostitute in Thailand. That also has happened. And every time I think to myself, you know, we are, we are all in the same boat, just trying to understand why we're here, trying to deepen our spiritual uh, knowledge. We are all imperfect. And everything can be overlooked, pardoned in some ways, if it's in the right attitude. You know, Surda says, I sing this one bhajan. Jinke hirday harinam basi, in or kanam liya na liya. In the end, he says, Kapti ko meet kia na kia. Kapti ko, actually, funny story. When I was singing, singing this once, an English lady came up and said, Oh, yeah, I really like that song about, about cup of tea. <laughs> I said, Mataji, this is not cup of tea. Cup tea means deceit. So Surdas is making a point, Swami Surdasji, that if you're chanting the holy names and you're really sincere in your spiritual pursuit, then you might see sometimes devotees are deceitful. They say something, they do something else, right? You know, it's to be understood and, and taken as we're all in the same spiritual path. So from that perspective, I can, I've always resolved it within myself without being disturbed. But you know, there has to be a line where we draw. And for me, it's child protection. We cannot say that, oh, that is something that's already happened. And it was just a fall down. We cannot say that with child abuse. And I know abuse is a very strong word. And maybe words are triggering. Maybe that's not the right word. However, protecting our children uh, is, to me, is the pinnacle. Um, they're the most vulnerable. They don't, often don't have a voice. They suffer. Um, I, I was very fortunate that I was not sexually abused in Gurukul because a lot of my friends were, but very badly beaten. That was an everyday occurrence. Actually, in fact, I have a very good friend in LA. Whenever he sees me, he was in the room when once I was beaten very, very severely, almost half dead, you can call. And he always sees me and says, Hari Bhakti, I feel so bad for you. I'm so sorry. I, I, I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. Because he was only, I think I was nine and he was only 12 or 13. What is he going to do? He just stood there and witnessed this teacher literally break the stick on my head, my back, my legs. So this is very, uh, I'm not making a comparison by any uh, means, but what I'm saying is that has to be the standard for our institution. Otherwise, look what's happening to the, to the churches right now. You know, this always comes back and it comes back stronger and it destroys institutions. And, and Prabhupada's legacy really is, uh, we must protect it at all costs. It's more important than any personality. So I hope, I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters, I hope um, we can see the other side of the table. We can talk, we can have a conversation. And, I, and my pledge, my humble pledge to Dr. Maharaj, if he could consider uh, not fight it, because the more you fight it, the more this fight, you know, consider uh, stepping down. I think that would, at least be a good gesture towards both the conversation to take a different turn, perhaps, you know? And all these threats of this, that it's not gonna help, you know? You know, it's not gonna help. This is a very personal matter, which unfortunately has become public. And many people are reading it. I had another friend, has nothing to do with this gun. He messaged me, what's happening? This is so rubbish, this, that. You know, they don't understand the big picture. So. It's, it's become such a mess online, which is unfortunate. So 
I thought I would come up and, and have a very real conversation with all of you. I hope you look upon me kindly and lovingly. I do love you all. Um, and again, my um, loving embrace to all of you. I don't want to offend anybody. I have spoken truly from my heart from whatever I've observed. Uh, is it perfect? Of course not. But at least we are having a family discussion here rather than uh, an impersonal two-party throwing at each other clubs and swords. <laughs> so on that note, uh, again, I love you all. I do. Thank you. Thank you.